You know what? Let me take one last look through my folder here. I'm trying to see if there's any cleanup we needed to do. Streaming didn't have too much. Maybe legacy streaming, recording. We got the Bowser kids. We got robot test stuff. Nah, I think this will work. All right. Make sure this is all up and running. And where'd we leave off? It's been a while. So turn off a line first of the surface here. Uh, we have 2021.6.6 installed. I think that's the latest. It's actually been a minute since I've been in ZBrush in any real way. So let's get reacclimated. I am well. Hey, thanks for showing up. Oh, my restream text is huge. That's eh, okay. My eyes are getting old. And we got this. We, we made some headway a while back. Uh, we just need a few more things to make and then maybe do some uh, fur and hair. That'll be kind of fun. So just real quickly, and I got some more reference images too. I'm trying to see like what some of these details might be um, around him. So let's go ahead and say shift, turn all turn everything on. We got our reference guy back here. Go ahead and turn him off. Got his necklace here. We turn this into a turtle skull, and then it also looks like it's got some arms hanging down. So it's not just this. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna alt tap this, and we're gonna say duplicate it off. And I'm gonna grab two of these little beads here. We're gonna say split hidden, and then I'm gonna drop these down a little bit. We're gonna re oop, reset. Oh my gosh. Boy, am I new to ZBrush? Solo. Q, W, Alt, Tap. There we go. <laughs> Drop this down here. And if I wanted to shrink these down, one way to do that is just do a deflate, deformation and deflate there. Um, somehow there's no notification on YouTube or Twitch for the event. Oh no. Well, we're gonna, it's gonna have to be word of mouth. You're gonna have to go out there and just tell everybody Michael Pavlovich is doing his usual thing where he doesn't really know what he's doing, but he's trying his hardest. Nah, he's not trying his hardest. He's trying. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to drag a little few planes out of here. I'm going to go ahead and say split mass points. And on these planes, we're going to go over here. We're going to say geometry, turn off smooth uh, modifier, divide this up a couple times so I can get some resolution on here. And we're going to make some little hand bones. So, ooh, that was a little mayor of east town there let's see we got the thumbs on this side eh, let's divide this up here i guess i could do that okay so we got some hand bones going here and eh, thin these up just a little bit here and you know i'm gonna make these a little bit longer because i'm going to divide these into a couple different sections here so we've got this i'm going to go down here say delete lower and we only need to do one side now that I think about it, we'll go ahead and delete hidden, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And because we want a nice clean cut around here, edge loop mass border underneath geometry there, we can split that up, say delete hidden, and uh, we can make some bones out of this. Um, oh, there it is. Cool. Good morning. Uh, <laughs> I uh, Actually, that reminds me. Let me keep this. Oops. Don't need that. I already got it open. Making sure, uh, yeah, I got that position just right. I got my, uh, what is those, trim trim smooth border and trim adaptive uh, Mickey Mouse ears there. I think I'm going to stick with that. It's going to be my signature look. You'll know you're watching my stream if I've got my little ZBrush icon Mickey Mouse ears on. Um, how do I want to do this? Let's see. So I've got my shapes here, and I don't necessarily... Let's do this. Let's go in here, hold down control shift. I'm going here to slice curve. We're going to go in here to auto groups. And we're going to say, you know what? You need to be a separate bone and you need to be a separate bone and you get a separate bone and you get a separate bone. And then through here, uh, we're going to give this a shot. We're going to say double depth size down quite a bit. Keep groups, smooth groups down to zero, zero mesh. And then, you know what? Now let's do half. And that'll go ahead and give us nicer geometry. Uh, if it has a little bit of problems here, it's not a huge deal. You can actually go through here and help it out a little bit. 
This is going to be a little bit messy at first. I'm going to shoot this down to the bottom so I know where everything is. I'm going to go down here and say split, group split. And now we just do these uh, individually. Uh, let's see, half, half, half. Keep groups off, sorry. That's about as low as that one's going to go. All right, fair enough. Is this really as low as it's going? That seems suspect. Um, oh, you know what? It's white because these are super tiny, actually. Uh, let's go through here. I'm going to say split this edge here, and we're going to say delete this one and this one. Um, and if it doesn't let us delete that one, I'm suspect on that one too. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to say uh, weld points. That's still not letting us. It's doing something weird here. That's okay. We can go in here and say extrude edge and just bloop, pop that on over. Next, that one looks fine. This one looks fine. We are going to go through here and say delete you and delete you. Get rid of this one here. Delete hidden. Yeah, there was just some little stringy geometry here that wasn't helping us. Everything else looks fine enough. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be something. So uh, we've got our little hand bones here. And through here, now we can go ahead and say, you know what? Let's merge all these back down. I'm going to go say, use my hotkey for this one. And now let's go down here to our panel loops. And we're going to say loops of one. Polish down to zero and thickness way down. And there's still some little stragglers here, aren't there? Uh, I wonder if I can say, yeah, we could just do this. These stragglers are wreaking havoc. Delete this one. And, you know, it probably would have been easier. And this is one of those things where I would fix it in editing is to go through, I'm actually going to drop my draw size down. So preferences, draw, dynamic brush size, we're going to put that to 0.25. So I can actually make this a little bit smaller since I am dealing with very small objects all of a sudden. Fine, we're going to say do nothing and do nothing. There we go. Uh, you could also just take some cylinders or take some spheres, mush them around into bone shapes. Uh, we're making very small hand bones here, so it's not like it's a huge deal. And uh, that way you can avoid some of this headache through here. So I don't know if this is the most effective way to go about doing this. Yeah, let's turn this off. And I wonder, I think it's because we're at such a small scale that it's behaving erratically here. Um, God, can I turn this down a little bit here? Let's see, control minus maybe. There it is. Um, uh, let's see here. Now, you says good morning. I got, I did. Uh, <laughs> I got a bit of a break. I got to catch up on uh, Cruella and Mayor of Easttown. Uh, play with UE5, UE5 yet? I haven't installed. Um, <laughs> that's about as far as I got before I got sidetracked with some other stuff. Looks cool. Uh, I got the I got the hundred gig demo to play with. We'll see how that goes sometime this week, maybe. Anyway, you know what? Let's just go through here and we'll just inflate. Um, and I turned the loops down to one just so I had just one extrusion. You could also do an extrude on this one. I'm gonna go through here and I'm just gonna do. Um, let's just hit Control W. I'm gonna do a quick polish by features. Just to kind of soften these things out. So there's our there's our bone shapes here, and now we can go through here. We'll go ahead and inflate out these little tips here, and just kind of make these generally more bone shaped through here. And we'll go ahead and attach these two so they're kind of linked together. Good enough. So we've got some bones. Let's go ahead and switch that back to startup material here, and let's hit W. Alt tap so we can go to unmesh mesh selected here. I'm going to turn on L sim for when we 
actually end up making this. And you know what else I like to do? I'm gonna go in here, let's see, texture, import. I like to keep myself uh, are, uh, honest. So we're gonna go in here to, we're streaming. We're under turtle power, bebop, reference, view, medium icons, because we need to grab this blue. Select, add it, crank it up. And then I'm gonna drop this opacity down just a little bit. And that's our, that's in our spotlight here. And then I can go through here and make sure we can turn on perspective too, if you want to. And just make sure, it doesn't have to be perfect, but something representative. I don't want anything that's like super out of whack. So it looks like if I take the hand that we have selected here, little hand bones, I'm gonna say mirror, uh, mirror and weld across the X, we'll turn the LSM off real quick. There we go, turn it back on. Uh, X symmetry is turned on, and now I can see uh, where those hand bones should generally be. So I can go ahead and move those out a little bit, move these up, and that's about where these things should go here ish. And we'll go ahead and rotate, it, rotate this around a little bit. So it's just kind of sitting on his chest again. And you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to inflate these just a tad. I'll say one, one. Good enough. So now we know just above here needs to be these little guys. And then we're just going to drag off some copies real quick. So uh, control drag off, control drag off, and we'll shrink those down. And we'll do that same thing up here. Control drag, control drag, control drag. Um, so through here, let's do a quick, uh, let's, I guess we can do an auto groups and then a quick mirror and weld. And I'm going to go through here. I'm going to turn on auto masking. And you know what? Let's just turn on topological. You can use the groups option, but if you take this down to draw size of one, you can go through here and just move these around individually. So that way we can kind of quickly kind of space these out real quick. We don't have to use an IMM brush or anything like that. And that'll get us close enough. And then this middle one here is going to be the biggest. Actually, maybe this one right here. So I'm going to hit uh, Control Shift, and then we're just going to inflate this one along its surface normals. So that'll be big. The other ones will be smaller. Here, I'm going to do a, another uh, quick auto groups and then mirror and weld. The reason I do a mirror and weld out there in auto groups is so these will have the same poly groups on both sides. And then W, Control, W, Control tap any of these bones in here, and then do the exact same thing. Control drag this out. And I'm just going to turn this one sideways. We'll have some carpal, carpal bones. So we'll uh, connect on up there. Here, and there we go. Filler. Close enough. Um, sorry if I get behind. As usual, I apologize in advance. Uh, I have some problems in Z with UVs and ZBrush. Can you help? Um, maybe. I hope you were doing well. I have a question with mask pen. When you drag outside, it becomes drag mask. Is there any way to rotate that mask? The drag mask is always in one direction. What I would do is not use drag mask, but if I wanted to put like a tattoo on here, it's like, okay, I've got an alpha and I want to position this arrow tattoo on here. So I'm going to say, you grab this alpha and it's like, okay, switch this to drag rect. And here it is. Or you can go out here and you can drag, but it's only in one direction, right? That's where Brush Transpose Smart Mask uh, comes into play. Uh, it's right here. So now if you have, you have um, if you start, oops, Q, uh, Mask Pin, W, Control Drag Out. Oops, hit Y, sorry. Um, let's see, Transpose Smart Mask here, drop the Brush Alpha in. So when I drag this out, you can go through here and you can switch the uh, rotation of this. So now, um, so basically, load up Transpose Smart Mask, BTM, uh, grab an alpha arrow, and then now when you drag out this with the, uh, well, if you drag it out here, it's just going to be a drag rect. But if you drag over the body, it'll kind of drag out over the body, and then it'll allow you to adjust that rotation to point it in any direction that you want and kind of dial that in. So you can go here and then here. And then I think it's just like control and then control shift. Yeah, control shift if you want to add a mask. Mm. 
<laughs> Topics are sound to like an Unreal Engine. Sure, that's got to be super easy to do, right? Uh, Automaski has directional feature. Can you please explain how it works? Um, I tried, but I couldn't figure it out. I think it's just like what you're looking at is what it's going to, um, what is it? Auto masking. So if you go through here, um, like masking directional, there's, there's also, a, if it's anything like polygroup directional, it's, uh, where is that at? Oh, that's group front. Let me see. Uh, masking. Auto masking. What's auto masking again? Oh, right here. <laughs> uh, so you have auto masking and then you have back face masking, directional, directional auto mask, directional button will apply a virtual masking based on the direction of a stroke. Extremely beneficial with dots and roll the stroke panel is turned on. Alpha follow the direction of the stroke at all times. Change the focal shift and direction mask curve. Um, there might be one thing in here. So if I go through here and I say brush, if any, if it has rolls or anything, I'm going to bet that some of these scales probably have this turned on. I'm just going to kind of float through here maybe a little bit. Scales D, maybe scales fish. There we go. So scales fish has directional on and it's by pressure. So if I turn this on and or I start using this here, Turn this up a little bit here. So I want to put some scales on his back. These are kind of weird. Okay, so if I drag this out and I turn it off, and I drag this out, yeah, let's change this. This is kind of weird. You know what? Something's tickling my my head, the back of my brain about this. I mean, in this instance, when you just do a drag rack, it kind of gives you a slightly better fall off. Uh, but when you put this back to uh, the regular stroke, I'm not so sure that's a real effective. Let me see. Let me turn up the Z intensity here. So I'm dragging this along and then I turn off directional. Okay. Directional off, directional on. Who, who knows? Uh, something, something there. Skitch fish scales, that's a better one. Okay, here we go. So we'll crank up the Z intensity. So here we have directional on, and here we have directional off. Any difference? Directional curve, reset. Any difference? By pressure 50. I mean, it's doing something. I mean, if you ever want to know more, just hover over this and hold down control and then changing the focal shift and the directional mass curve will give the control the alpha placement and the minimal overlapping of the alpha. Moving the clay tubes brush to a focal shift about 95 with the roll on dots is a great example. Okay, so clay tubes. Oops, brush clay tubes. Okay, uh, directional focal shift of 90. Okay, so here is it, here is with focal shift off, and you can see it's kind of got that stepped look. If you put on directional focal shift of 90, it kind of gets rid of that stepped look. Kind of. Interesting. Maybe. Uh, alternatively, you can also go in here for like, a, I guess the clay build will probably be the same thing. So clay build up, directional, Let's go ahead and change focal shift of 90-ish. It also seems to kind of reduce the, the amount of clay buildup you can do. Um, so actually, okay, this is kind of interesting. So normally what I would do for the clay buildup brush is go in here, I'll turn this off. We'd go in here to stroke modifiers and we would say uh, roll distance of five to get rid of that stepping. However, and then I would also turn this intensity down. So if I'm going to go through here and I'm going to kind of sculpt out something like the muscles, I would go through there and do that. Uh, drop that Z intensity down. However, it looks like what you can also do is you can say, we'll keep this up at 20. We'll turn directional on. We'll crank that focal shift up. And now with our clay buildup brush, 
Eh, it kind of makes it behave a little bit weird, I suppose. But you could probably play with that alpha and see. Let's see, reset, focal shift. Yeah, stuff like that you just got to play with. I am certainly no, uh, obviously no expert in that exact setting. <laughs> but for what it's worth, uh, I, I, I toggled it off and on. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, okay, let me go back up here. Um, okay. Uh, Face placement, face cam placement is real good. Oh, excellent, perfect. Uh, how to work on two monitors. I'm working on two monitors right now as we speak. Um, it's pretty easy. You got your display settings here. You tell it what orientation your monitors are in, move it around, hit apply or whatever. And um, if you need to change the resolution of those, you can just hop into your control panel here, choose whatever resolution you want. And that's about it. Uh, hey, from Brazil. Uh, cool. Can you start with the basic? Yeah, we're doing pretty basic stuff, I think. Nothing too crazy. Uh, actually, yeah, let's look up the arcade game here. Let's see. Um, let's see if there's anything... Oh man, I remember these days. This is back when you fought a boss and how you knew you were winning is they would uh, they would start blinking red <laughs> and they'd blink faster and faster. How, how does messaging get any better than that? I think we peaked in like 1996. Um, Mayor says, I'm a big fan. Can you tell me how many time you spent on ZBrush when you were a student? Um, and not much. I, ZBrush wasn't really a, an approved thing when I was a student. And then we're talking two, 1999 to 2004-ish. Um, ZBrush was not an approved piece of software. So I had to uh, just use it on the sly. I'm going to go ahead and hit D for dynamic. And then I'll go ahead and smooth these things out. Same thing up here. We'll go ahead and hit D uh, for dy Oh, are these all separate? Oh, the solo mode here. Hold on, what's going on here? We got this one, and we got this one. I'm going to keep that one. We're going to delete this one here. Not sure what that was all about. Uh, and then up here, if I wanted to keep those teeth really sharp at the top, I could go through here and just run a crease on there. Uh, and I may need to drop that crease tolerance up. I guess drop up isn't what I'm looking for. Raise it up, and then we can do like crease level of one, smooth subdiv of two, and that'll kind of keep those top of the teeth a little bit more sharper. And then through here, if I wanted to move these things around individually, I think I've got these auto groups here. So I can hit W, let's hit Y to go out of transpose mode. Uh, and that's a really important step too for transpose part mass that I may not have made super obvious is that when you hit W, that's gonna be gizmo mode. You need to hit Y or go up here and hit this uh, Gizmo 3D on and off because you need this transpose to use transpose smart mask. Cool. Hey. <laughs> I do have Mickey Mouse here. So this is my signature look. We're going to roll with that. Uh, is that scale brush new uh, or a custom made brush? That's always been in there. Uh, well, at least not always, maybe, but for the past probably decade up here in the brush settings under scales. Those have been in there for a while. Cool stuff in there. And you can also take those brushes and then make them your own. Make them your own alphas and stuff like this. Let me get a... Sorry, I haven't tried it this morning. <laughs> um, how do you take your high poly model in another program like Cinema 4D? Do you retopo make big normals? Is this the part I'm stuck on? Any guys would be appreciated. Sure. Um, that's like that's one good way to go about it. I have here, so here's 
my art station page and on this art station page specifically if you want to quickly well if you want to do it for real the mechanical skull series is probably your best bet however if you want to do it real fast which is what i tend to do it's going to be down here underneath the speed modeling and texturing and or the sci-fi weapon process this will take you through his 42 videos but down here it'll be like hey decimated down auto uv um just get your stuff uh into engine really quickly and then you can go to like um sketch fab and you can just drop it in so for example under my models here where is this up just a little bit here you can see an example of this where I just went through, and again, this is just decimated down, auto UV'd, throw it into Substance Painter. Uh, in Substance Painter, you can export straight into Sketchfab, and then you just have this thing. Uh, so this is more about getting something quick into Engine so that you can determine if this is where the direction you want to go for your idea. And then at this point, you can go through and rebuild everything, UV it perfectly, get clean bags you know, do your production modeling task, but this is more of a concept uh, modeling task. And in fact, for production-y stuff, like the commander, the mech helmet, and the GDC female, and the apinator skull would probably be like handmade. And then the other ones that are just like decimated down and thrown in uh, would be more like these robot guys. Um, this one might be, I'm trying to remember, let's check out model inspector. Wireframe. Yeah, this one's just, well, no, I don't know. This one may have been hand done for some reason. This is a very old one, but um, I was hoping it wasn't because it's just a, you know, it's a really, really fast concept model where if you get in here and you look, you're like, oh, you know, it's not, it's not super duper modeled out or anything. But if you take a step back, it's like, okay, yeah, this is a concept model. It's just basically the idea and then you decimate this down, throw it into the engine. Uh, you could even animate this stuff. If you want to really get deep on some of that stuff, that would be like this ZBrush Summit, where we talk about, you know, doing these um, weapons models really quickly. So you can go through and just really like decimate them down, throw them into the engine, animate them uh, before you do your final production models, just to make sure they're working and stuff like that. Same thing for this Halo one down here, this GDC talk. Exact same thing. Get in, get things in quickly, evaluate them in context. Blah, blah, blah. But yes. Um, ooh, a zombie bebop. That would be cool. Take some flesh off. And that would be a good uh, ecorche <laughs> anatomy study too. It is me in the house. Um... This is the part I'm stuck on. Yeah, so I do have, you know, I do have some UV stuff. I don't have a ton of production stuff on my my channel. Another place too. Same. It's a little bit harder to read. Um, also here in my YouTube playlists, you can go through and that'll. Or, or if you want to have Houdini do it for you, uh, you can give that a shot. Probably the Houdini, Houdini Game Dev Tool Set will walk you through some of that. But I think the Houdini Auto Game Res might be a little bit more up to date. Um, I want to be as good as you. How did you manage to memorize all these things? Oh, for, I mean, I'm not. Uh, thanks. Uh, that makes me feel good. I don't know that I'm that good. Uh, but as far as memorization, I, I guess uh, 15 years worth of using ZBrush. And I wouldn't even say I use it that much anymore just because of the nature of the work that I do now. Um, I'm, more, uh, I'm more of a Miro guy, which is a basically a, a communication tool. <laughs> I'm more of a Zoom Slack call person now. Maybe some spreadsheets, Google Docs, Notion, SO documentation. That's what I do now more. But um, as far as using ZBrush, I think it's just, you know, 15 years of messing around with it. And I, that's, that's, good. that's put me in a What's the word I'm looking for? It's put me in a position where if anything new comes out on the ZBrush, it's pretty usually pretty easy for me just to be like, okay, I know what I know, and now I can add a little bit more new knowledge every time they do a release, as opposed to always kind of constantly being behind or being like, oh my gosh, I just learned the clay brush. Now they want me to learn this stuff. Um, eventually it does get easier. So just in case that was concerning you. Um, I'm gonna go through 
there's something about this that's bothering me a little bit too. So uh, he has this on his left arm only. I'm gonna say Control Shift Tap and go ahead and split these off into their own subtools here. Uh, I'm gonna hit D for dynamic. We're gonna do another crease level of say two, smooth sub of three, and that'll kind of give those a little bit of a fall thing. Maybe smooth sub of four. And on this bracelet here, doesn't have a ton of uh, detail here, but we have uh, this little clasp here. This clasp looks like it should go on like a like a very, I don't know, very, uh, it looks a little bit frail for what our purposes are. And I don't know that we need all this detail. I may, I may do a little bit of a hand wave here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say delete hidden and I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna say collapse poly loop here and here. And let's go ahead and slide this edge over. So we're gonna say slide edge here, just kind of move these around and that'll give us this and I'm gonna go back through, I'm gonna uncrease all and then we're just gonna increase with the crease tolerance. So now when I hit D for dynamic, we can do again, crease level of two, smooth sub of three. And now I've got his little wrist here. Uh, and the reason I'm not doing real subdivisions is I can always go through here and see what the preview of the subdivision would be so I can make sure this is out where it should be. If I wanna make it thicker or thinner, I can, and if it has different polygroups on each side, which I can do really quickly, uh, group by normals, polygroups, group by normals, and then we can go through here, Q mesh, polygroup all, hold down shift, and then we can just kind of pull along those surface normals. Um, and by doing so, I don't need to worry too much about like, oh no, I have a ton of subdivision levels. I go down to subdivision level one, and then bring it back up. It's like, no, we just need to worry about this one, low res geometry it can look like it's high res but it's really not that just allows us to be a little bit more flexible as we're working so when in doubt just use dynamic don't overthink it don't add a bunch of geometry to your scene that you don't need to until you absolutely need to uh, these guys are floating a little bit again you can go through here and you can do auto groups and then if you use your move brush here you can control tap any of these you can set that normal angle or you should be able to alt tap set that normal angle what, oh, turn off perspective. Bleh. Set that normal angle. If you're ever doing anything, honestly, just keep perspective off. I don't know. If you're matching like a, a portrait or something, keep it on. Then you have the right focal length dialed in for your camera reference. But for everything else, just keep perspective off. It's a pain. So here. So and the kind of uh, let's go around here and embed these again. And like I said, we can we can hand wave a little bit the functionality of this. If we wanted to put like a little divider or just give some indication that like, hey, you know what? On the back end here, we want to do maybe a bevel edge loop complete here. And then I'm gonna go through here and we're gonna say Q mesh a single poly and just pop that back. And now I'll just run another crease, turn on dynamic, say crease level three, smooth to above four. And now I've got, you know, a little bit of space in there that'll kind of indicate that this thing can work. Um, if we want to take that a little bit farther, we can say, let's go ahead and insert multiple edge loops, key poly group. We're going to put a line right down the middle here. I'm going to uncrease all because we're going to redo our creasing in just a second here. So if I want this one to go out and this one to pop in a little bit, we can bevel this edge loop here. And again, if we want to keep our poly groups, we can just go back here, group by normals, and we're back to where we started. And then I want this one to kind of push in. So we're going to Q mesh this back. And then I want this one to kind of come out. So we're just going to Q mesh this forward. Now I can go until it snaps. I don't necessarily want to do that, but I do want to pull this out a little bit. You know, instead of Q mesh, let's go ahead and extrude. That way I won't have that snapping functionality, which is a feature. Uh, and then I can slide, again, go back to slide edge we're gonna scooch this over a little bit we're gonna scooch this over a little bit like so and with our move brush we have topological still turned on and you don't have to turn on topological for your move brush you can go in here bmp which has a move topological brush built in i'm gonna go ahead and kind of move these into place here so again, uh, we'll go ahead and straighten these out a little bit here. And again, we're just kind of indicating functionality. If we wanted to, we could say, let's slide 
this edge back a little bit here. We'll go ahead and hit D for dynamic, and then we'll just run another crease. And then now we've got you know a little bit of little clasp built in there. Uh, jeweler tutorial, please. You just missed out. Uh, the person who streamed right before me is all about that. Uh, Thomas Wittelbach. Uh, does mate down audio V sounds amazing? Do you merge the whole model into one OBJ? Uh, kind of depends. If you want to have something animate so that you know a faceplate moves or something like that, then you would obviously want to keep that a separate object. Um, but actually, no. Even if I'm going to go through and bake, I'm going to keep my lows. I generally break up on what's going to animate. So it'd be basically like on this guy, you know, this bracelet I might merge into one piece here. Eh, this is a really bad example. Everything on him I'd probably do separately, but um, basically if it's a helmet, and actually, you know what, I do have those files. I can load them up here. Uh, let me see, ZBrush demo. Nope, uh, info, intro. Sample files. What am I looking for here? Helmet, back helmet. And also we'll do a quick save here. And this has the entire walkthrough here. So we've got our mech helmet block out. Just kind of getting our idea in the round here. Even this you could take in and decimate down and throw some materials on. Um, so here's the little bit of the rebuild. So after you've sculpted a little bit, you go through and rebuild it. Here's where you find the forms. Here's where we finalize it out. And then here's some details on here. So for example, on this one here, I would say, you know, take this, all these pieces for this uh, forehead piece right here that can rotate around this point and bake those together. And then take all these pieces through here that are going to bake together. If this little nose thing is going to be able to go in and out, well, that's going to be baked uh, together. So I'd pop those out into its own subtool. I would name them nose piece high, face plate high, uh, lower jaw high. And then I would go through and decimate all those and name them low. And then I would bake to namespace so I don't get any normal baking errors. And then call it a day. Uh, pretty new to Zebras, when you start out a project, you usually start from a preset model from Lightbox, or do you sometimes sculpt them completely from scratch? If I'm trying to learn, like, uh, let's go ahead and, I mean, if I'm just kind of messing around, I'll just start from a sphere, you know, or I'll start from a base body, you know, here's, here's the base body inside, and then I'll just start sculpting on her. Um, but if you're trying to learn anatomy or something like that, you can, let's see, delete all. Or a combination of both. You can start with a base body and then you can go through and, you know, take a sphere and start sculpting on it. Um, but if you want to do like, hey, I want to do some armor. I'm not really interested in learning anatomy right now or practicing it. You can go in here and just start with a base body um, and just load up the male or the female and then just go to town. It's much like riding a bike, right? It gets me, a, take, does take me a second uh, to get my brain back into ZBrush mode. Uh, I'm trying to make the close marvels on the ZBrush model. I may, and then I try to morph targets so the clothes move in different poses. The ZBrush model just gets destroyed. Um, so you're using a morph. So in here, let's go down here. So there is a uh, Marvelous and ZBrush quick start. You can use this. And in this, I have this, what's it called? I use it for like putting knee pads back on to the, uh, well, maybe it's not on here. I thought I had it. Avatar Morph. There it is. Um, I don't know where this is in my channel here, but for what it's worth, uh, you can use, yeah, like you're doing, like you're morphing your avatar back so that the clothes will kind of follow along. So if you bend the arms, obviously the clothes will follow along slowly and carefully. Um, as far as your ZBrush model getting destroyed, I'm not sure what that would be all about, unless you're talking about, um, I mean, if, if I was going to do that and be like, okay, I've got this model here. Let's do, do another, did I delete all those? Yeah, do another quick save. If I want to pose this guy out, uh, number one, I want to make sure I have subdivision history and all of these. I'm usually pretty good about that. So I'm just going to go into that blind. I think I have those generally broken out. So I'm going to go in here to transpose master. We're going to transpose mesh. That's going to drop everything down to the lowest. And then if I want to go through and pose this guy, again, if I'm going to export this as my avatar or variation of this, and then if I want to say like, hey, you know what? I've put a shirt on him. Now I want to move his 
body so that the shirt follows along. That's when I would just go through here and like, you know, select the lasso, ah, stroke, lazy mouse, off. Control shift, stroke, lazy mouse, off. Okay, oh, control shift, lasso. For some, I don't, I really don't like having lazy mouse on with my lassos. So uh, go through here and then it's like, okay, I wanna bend the shoulder here. Control shift tab to bring everything else back. Hey, you know what? I want this turtle uh, shell to also kind of go along with it. So we're gonna isolate all this here. You know what? We're just gonna say control shift A. Mask it. So now eyes are all separate pieces, really. Okay, so invert that mask, and now as we go through and rotate this, everything will kind of follow. So it shouldn't, like, you know, if I'm going to pose this, it shouldn't destroy your ZBrush model because you're literally going in here and making your avatar morph uh, for your ZBrush model. So I'm not, I guess I'm not really following. It's only going to get as destroyed as I allow it to be, which it, right now is pretty destroyed, but we'll go ahead and control tap to, um, to uh, fade that mask out a little bit and kind of bring this along. And honestly, for, even for hard surface stuff, I probably don't need it. Um, I could just go through here and be like, you know what? I'm just going to pose this arm out and the turtle shell I can do separately. So blur this out, W, go in here and set the bone, or you can go in here and say, you know what? I want to use transpose to set that root and then tip or whatever and then go through here and kind of go through and pose this. Um, it's actually been so long since I've done that that uh, I'm probably more inclined just to use a gizmo. But then you go through here and you can do a little bit of cleanup just to make sure that the muscles are kind of following along here. And then you can go through and grab the turtle shell or whatever and move it along with. Uh, but again, it's not really destroying it. And then if I wanted to, I could go through and send this back over t -pose message or transpose, but I don't need to do that. So delete all that. Because yeah, if I'm making my avatar morph, I'm making it. So it's only going to get it destroyed as I let it get it destroyed. As far as I can tell. <laughs> uh, what's your workflow though? Z rig that model, same thing. Just go over here to transpose mesh, transpose mesh, just turn on Z sphere rig. I rarely, if ever, use that transpose rig. The only time I ever use that is if I'm doing like creature work. It's super organic. Anything that has hard surface components in it, if I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna say, just get rid of all any hard surface stuff. I can just like the, the belt and the shoulder pads, possibly even the shoes. Bracelet I can probably keep on there. Eh, even the bracelet, because if I'm gonna bend those wrists, it's not going to wait. Or I had to put in a bunch of helper joints, which may or may not be all that useful. So I'll use it to bend around my organic stuff, uh, but that's about it. Uh, favorite genre of movies, games? I reckon it's sci-fi. What's your favorite movie or TV show? I'm more of a, uh, like a, yeah, recently, Mayor of Easttown, Mindhunter, Fargo. Um, those seem to be the kind of shows I gravitate towards. Movies, movies probably the same. But I, I go through different types. Of, I like all types of movies, honestly. Uh, but those seem to be what I'm gravitating towards recently. Uh, tiny, kind of true crimey stuff. Um, let's see, what do you think about the Yuga Brothers as you saw it? Uh, Nanite and all that lumen. Looks totally cool. Um, peel UV nose for ZBrush 2022. I don't. I'm I'm just a I'm a simple person, making simple things. I have no insight more than anybody else. Um, 15 years of John Tremont effect apologetically hidden. Exactly. That's why it's cemented in my brain. Uh, yeah. If you Google peel UV, you'll go to their YouTube video where they showed that off a couple years ago. Uh, feel like your character's not there yet it needs more but people tell you it's enough it's good the way it is uh, oh what to do when you feel like the character's not there yet or needs more but people tell you it's good enough uh, if people are telling me it's good enough I'm probably gonna stop <laughs> if you're not quite satisfied with it then uh, go ahead and finish it out if we want to pose this print as a statue how'd you go about that exact same way transpose mesh over here I wouldn't necessarily go through I mean I guess you could make a game res and then go into like a, you know, rig it and Maya and paint weights and stuff. But for that, I'm probably going to just pose it out real quick, do any cleanup work I need to do. If I get around to it, 
Well, I mean, I'm not going to leave him in an A pose, so we're definitely going to pose him out at some point. Uh, let's see. Yeah, John, you always around, and thank you for that, John. Um, yes, yes, yes. Dynamesh zero mesh still maintain the UVs of an object. No, because you're changing the vert order. So the vertex order is what's when you have verts and you have UV coordinates, those are linked together. So if you ever change the vert order, your UVs are going to change too. Um, and in ZBrush's case, it's going to obliterate them. It doesn't keep them around. You can, like if you were in another modeling program and you have UVs and you start just adding more verts to your model, it may ignore them. It may not give them UVs. It may take your pre-existing UVs and kind of do some crazy zany stuff to them. Um, but for the most part, you have verts and you have corresponding UVs and if you start making more verts but not UVing them, then it, it doesn't do it automatically. There may be some AI or machine learning or some really fancy auto UV things going on under the hood that you could do. But um, generally speaking, if you're modeling, uh, UVs don't just... F you can modify your, UV, your model and have it update. Like in Maya, you can go and add an edge loop or you can even turn on, hey, I'm moving around my model update my UVs on the fly and it'll actually move your UVs with your modeling if that's the option you chose. But um, yeah, if you Dynamesh, it changes your verts. So there's no keeping the UVs. You could Zeri Mesh and then do a, uh, in Maya, the only, the only thing I think of is like, if you can go to modify, what's it called? Modify transfer attributes. And then you can transfer your attributes from one object to another and transfer those UVs over. It's a little hit or miss. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that production wise or <laughs> rely on that to get something done. But if you're ever in a pinch, you can give it a shot. Uh, easy, easy. If you want to go to my tweak them, every single edge is cut for some reason. I don't know why it happens or why it doesn't happen. Um, that's a pretty easy fix. As long as those UVs are on top of each other, just do a weld UVs and it will weld them up for you. Cool. Yeah, I just finished my last CGMA term. Although we have so many terms, I'm going to start another one up in a couple weeks, probably, if I'm... <laughs> feels like. Um, when I import the posed avatar in a model's morph target, that's when it gets destroyed. Huh. I'm not sure why it would do that. Maybe maybe we'll hop into Marvelous today and see. Oh, when I pose in Zebras, it's fine when Marvel's from an unposed over to the morph target. That's when the model acts like the faces are not welded together. Oh, um, okay. So, okay, that's, that's probably what it is. When you go down here and you do an export, because Marvelous is only going to take an OBJ, I, I believe. So when you go in here and you say export, it's going to export as an OBJ automatically. Make sure it's all one polygroup and or on export. Make sure you have uh, merge UV coordinates on and export. So maybe turn groups off. Because if you have poly groups or something weird, quad poly, it's going to do, it may do something weird. Um, what I usually do is just hit control W to make everything one poly group when I export as an OBJ, just so there's no weirdo stuff going on like that. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, with my E3D DVDs maybe. Cool, best tip for making folds and wrinkles in clothing. Uh, we could, we've done a little bit of that. Now with the new uh, this is BCK, so we have cloth hook brushes here, so we can go through here and we can literally add cloth. However, you're gonna see it's not gonna do too much because we are well over our limit here for our dynamic. So when you go in here to dynamic, and you can do this for wrinkles on the skin as well, which, you know, on the, on the elbows here, that'll happen. So if we go through here, and again, we're four million polygons in, so it's not gonna behave appropriately. However, you can do a couple things. You can go in here and you can say, I just want to work on the elbow here. And now your cloth wrinkles will work. However, these are really fine wrinkles. We don't need that. So you can always drop down in your subdivision history and now it'll give you a little bit more general wrinkles. Uh, you can also go in here to thick skin and you do wrinkles. It's like sliding skin over bone. In this instance, what I'm probably going to do. Uh, and now we're, we're just under the uh, resolution. Uh, simulation points 250 now we're just over it so again it's not going to simulate correctly however like I said before you can take a little piece here and then go through and simulate this uh, what I like to do though is go into my pinch brush and then for my brush settings go down here to elasticity and then say simulation iterations um, you don't have to go all the way up to 100 but 
I just generally do. And now I can use my pinch. I can go in this direction to pinch this way. I can go in this direction to pinch this way. And then I'll go ahead and add wrinkles. If I want more resolution, I can, two things. I can go subdivision level four, and that'll give me uh, more resolution for higher resolution wrinkles here. Um, so in this case, you know what I'm, what I, even what I tend to do here is I tend to be like, hey, let me get some general direction of the wrinkles where they would go. And then I'll go through here with my pinch brush and I'll use that and it'll kind of pick up the, it'll try to maintain the volumes that are already there. So it'll kind of give me <clears throat> the directions that those are going in and then I can just add wrinkles that way. Um, same thing for wrinkles down here. So these were, I think these were done in Marvelous. Pretty sure. However, uh, there may be some instances where I want to kind of modify these a bit. Maybe back here it actually, let's drop this down. These get a little bit, these get a little bit squirrely. Let's go in here to our inflate brush. And just kind of give those a little bit more meat here. Those get a little bit wobbly for my taste. So if I want to put wrinkles on here, I can go through here and I can be like, okay, let me sculpt in some wrinkles, maybe so there's level three. And again, you know, getting my, these are more like primary form wrinkles. I'm not looking to like go sit in level five and carve in some really high res wrinkles. I really just want to get primary and secondary form. So subdivision level three is usually fine. If I want to add to this, I can go through here and be like, you know what? Uh, let's go back to my pinch brush here and we'll simulate some wrinkles. And in fact, it's a little too much. Let's drop down so to level two. And there we go. We can just simulate these wrinkles uh, in here a little bit. And then we'll go back up here and then you can go through and you can clean these up. So standard brush. Let's go ahead and turn on, turn up our lazy radius a little bit so we can get a little bit of a smoother stroke. And that's under your stroke menu. You know what? So there's level four is probably enough. If you ever find that you're fighting uh, the mesh, um, drop your subdivision level down. Uh, if you ever find that you're fighting the mesh and you don't have subdivision levels, that's when you can zero mesh, project your details back from your DynaMesh and then just get out of DynaMesh mode. If you're not doing anything crazy like moving verts like mad, um, then you're probably safe to jump out of DynaMesh mode. Um, these pants are semi-problematic, I suppose. They're not, the geometry is not great by any stretch. Uh, I can always fix that. The question is, do I want to waste my time? Or do I want to spend my time, I should say. It's not a waste if it's going to be something that's going to help, but at the same time, it's going to be like, eh, low impact area, don't really need to worry about it. Uh, maybe I'll leave it alone. I don't know. We'll leave that alone for a bit. Because we can always project our details back. Um, but that gets a little bit iffy over there. Uh, how can I know if my model's in the zero position? Underneath geometry, position. You can go in here and just type zero. So that one wasn't just, that wasn't quite in the zero X position. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I need to catch up on. Usually, I used to watch Paul and Drust. Those guys, they know ZBrush way better than I do, so I'll, I'll watch through their stuff and see if they do anything weird that I didn't know about. Uh, what's the correct way of modeling characters? The muscles the correct way. Any tips or videos I should be watching? Uh, well, we can do some of that. In fact, I probably need to clean some of this guy up here. Uh, he's got everything kind of laid in here. Um, and, you know, if his arms are back, uh, this will so generally speaking, you're going to probably start with a DynaMesh model. And then at some point, you know, once again, you know, once you're not doing going crazy with the verts, you maybe Ziri mesh it so you can get uh, a little bit more fine tuned or a little bit um, a little bit more precise with your modeling because this is going to be more quads as opposed to, you know, a bunch of just crazy DynaMesh triangles. Uh, so in this instance here, let's go ahead and let's go around and we'll kind of clean this up a little bit. I'm going to turn off L for my lazy mouse. We're going to go down to subject level three, maybe. And we're going to follow around here, uh, you know, that kind of a chromium process. And that's going to go down to the scapula here. And that has got kind of a long scapula. He's a little bit of a weird, <laughs> weird uh, guy. And then here, this should probably be more... Uh, in this direction here. So this is going to go down in this direction here. So here you've got the spine of the scapula. It's going to go all the way around here to the acromion process. And then here is where your clavicle is going to meet up. He's, his proportions are a little zany, but we'll, we'll roll with it. So 
Here we've got the clavicle, and this good attaches to the sternum here. So we're going to follow this around, and this is going to be way back here. It's going to be that handlebar shape uh, right through here. Now that doesn't mean you're necessarily on this body type going to see all of that. Obviously, he's got a lot of meat on him. So where you're probably going to see it most is right here on this little section here. So if I want to build that up, one way to do that is like clay build up. Just go through here. And we've already gone and done it, but underneath stroke modifiers, we've got our roll distance up and we've got our Z intensity down. Uh, so you can actually go across the form here. Let me scoot that Z intensity up here. And we can just, again, go across the form. I'm gonna turn off directional, because I think that was doing some weird stuff. There we go. Z intensity down, directional off. And now, so we can pop the clavicle out here a little bit more. And then where the, the pec meets the clavicle, we're gonna cover that up because the pec's gonna attach right along the top of that clavicle here. Um, if you haven't done it, there's a Scott Eaton class you can take. He's, if you ever wanna watch <clears throat> somebody who knows their stuff, um, it's, it's watching him do anatomy, it's incredible. Highly recommended. Um, but we're gonna go through here and uh, you know, the, the fibers, uh, you know, where, where this is attaching. So this is gonna be, you know, the fifth rib is where this is gonna be attaching. And then you're gonna see a little bit of these serratus anterior. So way, way up here maybe, you know, underneath the pec where one comes out. I kind of had these dialed in here already. So we'll just kind of follow what's there a little bit. We'll kind of dial in the serratus anterior right through here. And that's gonna attach up into the inside here and maybe a little bit lower. So everything's kind of there. I'm gonna modify these just slightly. Bust this in here and then go back in with a clay brush. So essentially for muscle sculpting, uh, it's going to be defining the forms here, probably maybe with Damien's standard as a way to kind of go through here and be like, okay, here's the manubrium of the, the, uh, the uh, sternum here. And then there might be a, uh, a break here in the pec muscle. And then you can go through here. And again, you're just kind of carving it in. If you want to give it that Bruce Lee definition, you just carve it in here and then go back in with your clay brush or clay buildup and just kind of build up around those forms. Maybe a little bit of smooth brush. Turn my Z intensity down a little bit. Since I have smooth stronger turned on by default. Um, and then when we get down here, so this is where your deltoid is going to be attaching. So again, it's going to attach to your clavicle right here. And then you've got your chromium process right here, and that's going to, so you're gonna have the different heads of the deltoid here. So that chromium process is gonna be this lateral head through here, and this is gonna be your, um, so there's the lateral head here, and then on the side of both of these, you're probably gonna have a, possibly another division where that chromium process I uh, like the, the box of the chromium process, the front and the back, or the anterior and the posterior of that. You can go through and dial that in. And then you've got the rear head, or the posterior, and then the anterior of the front. And then, also, these are going to be down in here, and then underneath, we're going to use the move brush here to kind of move this stuff in. So basically, you're going to use the Damien standard or a standard brush or whatever to kind of punch in the details that you want. And then you can use the clay buildup or the clay brush or any number of brushes to kind of build up those forms. So again, we were over here with the serratus anterior. We can kind of just sketch in where those, are, those little digits are going to be. And then, then where your obliques tuck in to those. These are attaching to your ribs. And then your obliques are going to kind of attach in here too. So again, we're just kind of sketching those forms in. And he's, you know, this is a very, very ripped uh, or very, very shredded, uh, whatever you want to call it. What you kids are calling that nowadays. Uh, go through here, and then we can just kind of, again, clay build up around here. And then use a little bit of smooth brush here to knock this back a little bit. So clay brush, clay build up. Uh, I've got the rib cage kind of built in here, uh, just underneath in the rectus abdominis down through here. And then possibly up above, you might have uh, a little bit of a, pack here. Now this one, um, you know, this is going to be the six pack right through here. So one, one, two, three, four, and then six pack. Uh, but then also up here, you may have a little bit of a up above that just a little bit. Uh, one thing we were messing around with a uh, somewhat was what was that called? Um, 
Think, 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 think. Radiant. Kind of playing around with this. This and uh, Zygote body is a fun one here. So I'm just going to say, you know what? Uh, 8460 seemed fine. So let's select that folder here. So you can go through here and use our middle mouse button to kind of cycle through uh, this. And then you can also go in here to the 3D mode and we can use our middle mouse. What is it? Oh yeah, middle mouse, press and drag. So you can kind of go up through the different layers of the body and then you can kind of see, you know, again, this is where we were talking about. There's the scapula here and you can see right through here on the right hand side, the serratus anterior connecting to the ribs and then attaching to the back of the inside of that scapula there. Uh, there's a bunch of different ones in here. So you kind of go through and see if we can find one here. Let's drop down, maybe this one. This is also cool too. You can see the cross section and the ribs and the vertebrae and stuff like that. But this is the 3D view here. I'm trying to see if I can get a, get a decent one in here. It's a little hit or miss, obviously. close all these windows down. Hmm. Hmm. 23, 591. Eesh. There we go. Yeah, that's a good one. So we'll go through here and you can see again, you know, there's the lats and there's the uh, serratus anterior attaching right to those ribs right along here. And then the obliques attaching, you know, interdigitating right in there with the serratus and there's your rectus um, dominus and all that good stuff. And then there's the chest going through here. So all sorts of cool stuff, but generally speaking, that can maybe be a little more confusing than clarifying. So in that case, We'll hop into the zygote body real quick. We're going to turn off everything except for bones and muscles. And then again, if we want to look at that, you can just select it and then dial these back here. It's not as accurate, obviously, um, but you get an idea of where these things will stick. And if we go back here and we turn these muscles back on, and we say, okay, give me this one, and then also the obliques, and then dial the muscles back. You can see those two kind of working together. And also where the obliques attach. Onto all these ribs all the way through here, all along the that little crest there. It's all there. Um, but again, this guy's proportions a little bit uh, out there. But that still doesn't mean he doesn't have obliques. And they're going to go around here, and they're going to you know, continue to kind of tuck in here. He doesn't, he does have lats here, but the biggest, these, these things that are popping out are going to be the volumes underneath the lats. So the lats are going to be fairly thin, you know, through here. So you may see, and again, it kind of depends on if the max or lats are being used or not, if they're going to pop out or not. But uh, we got the spinal erectors through here and the traps here. So again, back to the muscle thing, you can go through here again with your Damien standard brush and kind of carve in to give a little bit more definition and then just smooth brush out. And then if you need to build up anything, clay build up is good, clay brush is good. And that'll kind of give you a little bit of even more definition here. Uh, also standard brush, we just need to really kind of pull out an edge of something is fine. Um, and then through here, again, this is gonna be the traps we're going to kind of meet around here. I don't know that we're going to see a whole lot of, you know, striation definition in the traps necessarily. So we'll leave those alone. But then down here, this is where the Terrus Major will be a little bit more prominent. He's not pulling down or anything, so it's not, I don't know that it'll be popped out necessarily. But I am going to probably have to rework this quite a bit, uh, the geometry here, so I can really, especially because he's be moving his arms a lot, to be able to go through here and make sure that this here, this can be a little bit tricky. This here is gonna go underneath and then the triceps is gonna go over. So 
we have our medial head, our long head, and our long head's gonna go over the um, teres major. So teres major, big muscle down here, and then the infraspinatus and teres minor are gonna be these muscles in here, and these aren't gonna be so poppy probably. And again, you're probably not gonna see the spine like that. We kind of we kind of sketched it in, but um, there may not be a whole lot of reason because you know you're gonna have the traps that are attaching to that. And that's gonna kind of overshadow. You know, he's not a very he's not a slender body type, so we're gonna kind of pop that out a little bit more. And then uh, what else we got? Triceps here. Uh, well, this can probably be a little bit. I mean. I don't know. This is more landmarks dialed in and muscles. Uh, when we, when you pose the body out, that's when you can decide, like, hey, this muscle is going to be flexed. This one's going to be loose, or vice versa. Uh, you know, this will be popped, and then this will be nice and smooth. Right now, it's just a bunch of landmarks and muscle definition. So, to make sure everything's there and accounted for uh, proportionally is probably what I would tend to do. I don't know if it's the right thing to do, but take it for what it's worth. And then, oh, here's another thing too. This probably won't be super bulgy right in here. You're going to have, it will connect back here like so. It will connect back here, uh, but it won't necessarily be a big muscle bulge all through here. It'll be probably a little bit more, let's see, muscle to bone is a tendon or a ligament, I forget. And then through here, this is where it'll kind of start picking up. Uh, but again, this isn't really an anatomy class. If you want to take those, I would strongly suggest Scott Eaton's uh, anatomy class is. I think he's got a couple. And then uh, do, 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 do. Now I also got my little guys here. I got a couple of these. I haven't named them yet. Maybe the stream can name them. Oh, I guess I can bring this guy. He's got wires wrapped around his leg. But um, these dudes here. So I can have these up next to me while their arms fall on the ground. So I can always have those kind of available to me while I'm doing stuff. Um, you know what, we could go, okay, so this can probably be a little bit more defined here. So again, we've got this head of the tricep here. It's gonna go down, it's gonna give that nice little wave here and actually I do have now that you mention it let's load this up we can go in here what were we doing by the end of recording let's go out of solo mode we've got this built out and so this was uh, taking the Ryan King's line bones here and then putting these things on just to kind of get a slightly better understanding of where these things start, where they stop, what their names are. So if we wanted to go through and do uh, these things, uh, we could. So the ridge muscles here, they're all labeled for you, brachioradial, extensor carburetus longus, and then uh, brevis and extensor digitorum and all this stuff. So working your way around here. Uh, flexor group and proteinator teres and all that good stuff. So having this available to me, if I wanted to go through and kind of clean this area up, we could. We can do shift S here and go around to the side and the back here. And we can, again, just have this as reference up here. And then we'll switch back to our character here and then just use those as guides. So as we go through here and we're like, okay, so this one here, so we've got our tricep here, it's going to come down, and here, and then we've got our brachialis, and again, you can always go back in here through move brush, we're not taxing the geometry very much, so we don't need to do like a new Z remesh or anything, um, and we've got the brachialis here, and that's going to kind of sit underneath, I don't have a real good front view, sit underneath the bicep on both sides here. So that's where these is just kind of poking through here. 
and then these muscle fibers are also going to kind of twist in this direction. And all we're using again is Damien Standard clay brush, clay buildup brush, nothing too fancy to kind of go through here and kind of knock these in. Uh, as we move around, this is where you got your ridge muscles kind of built in here. There's your lateral epicondylum humerus here and the medial towards the inside here. And let's this is left arm. Take my little guys here. Again, we can kind of tone some of this down because if we're going to be building it back up, you know, again, we're just kind of plotting where these things are going to go, what's going to attach to them, so that we can kind of start dialing this in. Make sure our volumes are basically make sure our volumes are correct. So the ridge muscle is going to go up a little bit higher here. Just use a little bit of clay brush. And that's going to kind of tuck right in here, brachialis. And then the lateral head here. And okay, so this is the that kind of that real angular swoop here. And then this one's going to be a little bit of a softer shape through here. And again, if you wanted to clay build up or clay brush or whatever to kind of punch these in a little bit more, you can and then smooth brush a little bit. And then working our way around, we're going to pop this one in and this is going to attach to that radius side. So here's our ulna. And then along the back here is where we're going to have here. And this is going to where that Anconius is what we were talking about earlier here and then all the way through here. He's got kind of stumpy arms. So that's that kind of shape we're looking for here. It's going to kind of come up and then over and then these extensors on the top. That's what's extending your fingers and then the flexor group on the bottom. And then right along the top here. And you've got your brevis, and you've got your digitorum, and you've got your minimi, and then you've got your ulnaris uh, all through here. Something like that. I'm not going to get too in depth on this, but I think you get the idea. And I'm going to crank up my Z intensity. And again, if you're fighting your geometry, just drop your subdivisions down. So you can go through here. And again, it's, you're basically messing with less geometry, a little bit easier to move stuff around. And then you can go up and uh, pop that in. These things aren't actually helping me very much. Uh, one thing we could do is we can go in here and we can say merge visible. And then I'm going to say delete all. And then now we can say append that. It's going to throw it way down there at the bottom. I don't know where it is in space. Oh, it's very tiny. So I'm going to do a quick um, unify. And then we can scale this down. And then I can move this into place here. So now I have some reference in here that I can just have available to me at any time. So I have a little bit of a better idea of what the names are, where they are in space, where their volume should go ish kind of use them as like flashcards a little bit here you know so we go around to the back here and if it's in the way no problem just alt tap it and just kind of move it out of the way and then alt tap back uh, so again we got this long flat one here and then we've got the Anconius kind of reaching down and grabbing here this is this should probably maybe go up a little bit more but we'll live with that for now and then it's going to kind of be this stabilizer muscle through here. And then this is going to swoop down and kind of cover up that furrow. And that's your extensor, carpi ulnaris. I hope I got these right. <laughs> Seems right. And then there's the uh, digiti mini me and then the, the digitorum right through here. And these are all connecting back up to, uh, if I alt tap, actually we just control shift tap here. So there's the radius going from that 
lateral epicondyle all the way down here to the thumb side and that's going to be basically all this right here is where those are going to follow so if he moves his arm or he rotates his arm the obviously the radius is going to rotate around the ulna ulna's not going to move and then that's that ulnar furrow here and this goes to the pinky side and then on top of all that is where all this stuff comes in so using this and you got your thumb muscles here go ahead and make sure those are accounted for at least the volumes and again, it doesn't have to all be like super Bruce Lee out or anything, um, but as long as you know you're you're dialing in what's there. Uh, again, just using your Damien standard brush, clay buildup, clay brush, and then there's your pronator, uh, Terry's. Uh, let's go ahead and let's draw. Yeah, I guess sub the middle of three is what you want. And also we can go in here, we can, if we're just working on the arm, we don't need everything else kind of gunking up our scene. So again, we can just hide that geometry with our visibility selection. And that actually might even increase your, if you're, if you're kind of struggling with your resources. Okay, so we got this, and then we have our flexor group down here, clay brush. Sorry, I haven't looked at the chat in a while, everybody. I'll hop back in there in just a second. And that is the medial head of the tricep. So we're gonna need to flush that out a little bit more. That's gonna come right up in through here. There's your cricobrachialis, the coracoid process is where that's kind of meeting up on the inside there. And then you've got a bunch of bundles of stuff. There's the brachialis coming down. And let's go ahead and divide that up here. And then here, there's that medial head we were talking about. And uh, we don't need to put in like a super strong indication of that, but you know, put a little Damien standard down there, maybe smooth it out just a little bit again, just kind of giving a little indication there. Uh, let's kind of pop this out. I don't have bones in him or anything, but again, we're just kind of looking for landmarks, making sure the volumes are kind of turning where they need to. And then also grabbing some reference of this type of body type would probably be super helpful. I don't have any of that up right now, um, but feel free to check my work. And I'll go back in later and do it. So back through here, again, this is still gonna be a furrow, uh, but those are kind of this extensor carpi ulnaris is gonna kind of cover that up a little bit. And then our Anconia is up here at the top. There we go, so we've cleaned this up just a tad and again depending on what his hands are going to end up doing when we pose them uh, that's going to change what's going to pop out what's going to be flexed what's going to be relaxed uh, but again we're just kind of dialing in landmarks here i'll go ahead and pull this up here control shift tab to bring everything else back uh, we can hide this in our scene i don't think we need to go back to that and then uh, we kind of messed this up a little bit here, so we'll go back in. Oh, another thing too, uh, we have Xymmetry turned on. And I usually leave this on too, but then you probably want to break up, um, you know, turn off Xymmetry and go through here and kind of make these so they're not all perfectly across. But for now, we'll leave them alone for now. Back in a solo mode here. Okay. Um, okay, I am way behind, so again, I apologize. Oh, well, thank you very much for the kind words. Uh, Uzaris. Uh, favorite fantasy creature type. Hmm. I'll have to think about that one. I have so many. Cool, cool. Uh, I'd use a 3D software like Maya 3D Studio Max for for more complex models. Um, not necessarily for more complex models, but if I never need anything that uh, I can supplement ZBrush, I use everything. Max, Maya, Moto, Blender. Um, but I like to do my ideation in ZBrush just because it's a lot funner to kind of go through here and figure stuff out. And then if I'm like, well, okay, technically, you know, it might be a little bit 
easier a process or a workflow or a tool uh, elsewhere, then I'll go ahead and grab that. But generally speaking, I do 99% of my stuff in ZBrush just to get my idea out in a fun way as opposed to the other programs tend to be a little slower for me where I find myself, you know, dialing in numbers uh, more so than, you know, having fun exploring and figuring things out, which is where I like to be most of my time, especially if I'm just having fun. Um, what's not fun for me is coming in here and being like, okay, let's let's do this type of modeling and dial in some numbers. It's like, no, let's make a Ninja Turtle guy. Uh, also, speaking of, we can start doing this hair, I think. I would probably do this in two chunks. I would do uh, this one, a little bit more of a mohawk style, and then this one I'd have longer uh, that we would tie and compress um, in here with fiber mesh, probably. Uh, at this point, we'd have to decide how realistic are we going. Uh, in that case, like we could keep these coarser, uh, a little bit more of a stylized, thicker hair, or do we want to do super fine, um, a little bit more of a realistic look, like, you know, this, this type of hair here. You know, a lot of fuzzy, furry hair, or a little bit more coarse. I don't know if I have a real good example of stylized. I suppose maybe this guy. I don't know. He's a little more realistic. After printing him, 3D printing this guy, we had to do a little bit more macaroni noodles. But uh, a load of texture and then draw them on the grid plane. Okay. Uh, then I project on the mesh. However, when I use the gizmo, I'm unable, I'm unable to move anything. Um, I'm not sure. I don't do that a whole lot. Uh, let's go in here and quick save. And I think in here there is a demo project. Shadow box? No. It's a skull with floor plane set up. Where is that? It's not our tool, is it? Z sketch? No. Shadow box? No. Image plane? Image plane? Hmm. Boolean somewhere in here is like a um, a project for image planes, and I don't know exactly where that is. But uh, oh, it's it's in here. Is it this one? I'm I'm hesitant to bring it in because it's going to blow away everything we're working on. Uh, but you can check those out and see how it's set up. Uh, but it, yeah, it shouldn't. You should be able to allow to move stuff wherever you want. I think that's that's a new one on me. It might be a might be a glitch. Um, if any dynamic buttons are pressed, expand. Deflate, etc. Are they active for whatever cloth brush you've selected, or is that just for running simulation? Can't recall. Yeah. So basically, uh, what John's talking about is we're over here and we're simulating uh, this cloth. So we're going to go through here and we're, again we're going to use uh, the pinch brush with like uh, iterations turned on. So we can go through here and we can just kind of dial in wrinkles, right? Uh, however, if you have dynamics on, or they're always on, but um, if you have dynamics. You know, looking at the settings over here, you can turn gravity off. If we turn on inflate and expand with this, it's going to inflate and expand uh, as I use the brush. So basically, as you're brushing, you're running the simulation, and as that simulation is running, it's dialing in these values uh, or these properties that you've turned on or off. So yeah, and if we turn gravity on, um, doesn't seem to be pulling very much, but these definitely will do their thing, as you can see. It's kind of a cool look. Go through here and expand his little jacket there. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention too is the firmness. If you're getting like the wrinkles are too small, you can drop in your subdivision levels, but also you can go through here and you can crank up that firmness so that uh, it's keeping the cloth a little bit firm, firmer. You can see those wrinkles are a little bit uh, more leathery. Uh, why do you wear these cute Mickey ears? Too cute. That's why I do it. I need, you gotta smash that like and subscribe button. You gotta be totally cuted out when you're in my live stream. And that's how I do it with my trim smooth border and my trim adaptive Mickey Mouse ears. People come here because of those cute ears, let's be honest. Nobody really cares about what I'm making. Uh, this is ZBrush, cool. Uh, correct way of modeling characters with muscles, correct way to videos, oops. I went, I went back up here. Uh, how do we line up muscles when applying polygons for deformation the correct way? Um, you should, uh, talk to your rigging department. They'll let you know. But uh, generally speaking, 
Um, I mean, I just Z-remesh these, so it's not going to be perfect. Uh, but, you know, quads down the form. So when these deform, they'll be nice and, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, predictable. Uh, but if I was to do this for real, we may follow, uh, you know, you can do this with Z-remesh or two. Uh, but basically, you know, this, oh, goodness, dot stroke. This, you're going to want to have to kind of, you want to kind of follow this around here. Um, there's a good, what's his name? Hip, hippo, hippo, hippodrome. He has some really good body and head anatomy uh, that you can look up and follow his cues. Uh, tablet, I'm using the In Wacom Intuos Pro. Uh, I find school to lag around a million points. Is there a way to speed it up? I don't have dynamic topology on. I can't afford a new computer as well. Uh, I don't. I don't. Don't use Sculptures Pro if it's lagging your machine. However, there is also um, uh, YouTube, really. Sculptress Performance. Maximizing your Sculptress Pro performance. So you can try this out if you want. Um, also, Sculptress Pro does work with visibility. So you can, uh, if you're using Sculptress Pro, which I'm not, but if I was, I can take this here. We can go through here and we can say, um, what is it, BSH, snake hook brush. So as I go through here and I use my snake hook brush, you see it's really taxing that geometry. Of course, if you turn on Sculptors Pro, it'll update the geometry on the fly. Uh, however, it can get a little bit bogged down, but you can go through here and you can use visibility. So you can just grab this little piece and you can do this. And then if you want to, it's getting super high million polygons, you can go into Z plugin. Decimation Master, Preprocess Current, decimate it down, keep all your details, and then continue using Sculptors Pro. However, probably the most useful thing out of all that is going through here and just being like, hey, if you're just working on this piece here, then just hide everything else. And that should increase performance, hopefully. <laughs> it's true, you're right. Yep, my, my mouse ears are always gonna be mouse ears. They don't turn with my head. Uh, all by design, it's all coming together. Um, that reference arm, where can I find it? You can make it. Uh, we could maybe make our own, uh, but I just made this. So basically just kind of starting with this and blocking out the muscles, control, you know, painting these things out so I could zero mesh them and then move them into place just to kind of uh, play around with it. You think ZBrush will ever support Python? Oh boy. Way over my head. Maybe. Uh, can you do it before... Uh, after or the arm, sure. Cool. Um, do you have any pig muscle groups? Uh, pig muscle groups in the body and the face. Pig muscle groups, yes, I probably should, especially. I mean, the body is essentially a human, so probably not there. But, but um, you know, for sure in the head, uh, the snout and stuff here. I do have some reference here. Now he's obviously. You know, he's a little different than an actual warthog. So, you know what? Probably not. Now that I think about this, probably I'm going to lean a little heavier on uh, human anatomy more so than warthog anatomy, if I'm being honest. Because just because this is, you know, not super piggy. Although, you know, maybe around the ears, go in and study and what's going on up there. But of course, if it's going to be covered in fur, uh, just making sure your volumes. Are generally right. Uh, let's go ahead and tone this down. It was getting a little bit nutso in the separation here. That probably not going to be showing like that too much. Okay. Um, is this a Russian author? Me? No. Do you have a favorite monster armor from the Monster Hunter series? I don't. Uh, I got a lot of catching up to do. Last game I played a bunch of was like Fallout 3 and World of Warcraft Lich King. <laughs> That kind of dates where I'm at. Um, Pikamon, great to see you again. How about low poly modeling? Would it make any sense to do that in ZBrush? Maybe sculpt something and then do a low poly retopo over it. Absolutely. But um, also makes a lot of sense too for, let's go ahead here and move multiple so I can get these things working correctly. Let's grab both these here. Um, you, not you. And I'm gonna rotate these just a tad so I can get those up off his shoulders there. 
Um, I do, you know, like we made these in ZBrush. There's no point in hopping out of ZBrush just to do this. You know, it's easy enough to use ZModeler for that type of stuff and chains and things like that. Uh, basically, this whole thing was done in ZBrush. It's all fairly simple. Um, let's see here. And if I miss anything, just shout it out again. I apologize. How often do you look at anatomy for reference in sculpting humans? Um, when I'm having fun and just kind of playing around, not that much. But then when I start dialing in, you know, where things need to be and making sure I'm doing it right, I'll go ahead and pull out uh, a little bit of reference. You know, my my little arms here, uh, just to make sure, just to keep me honest. Um, and this honest, this probably should be. You know, you can actually like look down and be like. Oh, yeah, there it is. I can feel it. Uh, this will probably be popped out a little bit more. So we'll go through here and we'll go ahead and again, clay build up or clay brush. I'm going to have that kind of popped out over here. And then this will be kind of that recessed area. It won't be a lump out. It'll be a lump in. And then smooth this down a bit. Uh, was there anything major left to do still? Well, he's got, oh, you know what, he does. So I'm gonna turn everything back on. And it's like, okay, so we've got our guy back here. You probably don't need to be seeing him anymore, this guy here. And then he does have that thing going across his chest. We can dial that in really quickly, that bandolier thing. So I'm gonna take his body here. We're going to duplicate him off. I'm going to drop, uh, yeah, so there's level three is actually probably fine. Delete higher, delete lower on this duplicate. And if we want to, we can hit Control W, Control Shift, and we can take the slice curve, hit space bar, turn on a brush radius, turn off X symmetry, and then we can just kind of dial in, you know, where that that piece of geometry would be. Control Shift Tap, Delete Hidden, Zero Mesh Half, Dash Size Out of Zero. Don't need to keep groups, and then we can just kind of use this. And if we want to, we can also do a quick uh, polish by features just to smooth that out a little bit. Maybe help Zero Mesher dial in this geometry for us. And there's, there we go. Um, this we can fix. And again, this is kind of part of that low poly modeling we were talking about. We can say, you know what, you and you are a pain in my butt. No big deal. Delete hidden. And we can extrude uh, these here. So let's go ahead and say extrude. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Extrude edge loop here and then tap alt once. And oh, it's not going to follow us here. You know what else we can do? Uh, really quickly, I'm going to go through here just temporarily, Q mesh polygroup all here and I'm gonna mark holding down alt and then we're gonna say delete single poly and then we're just gonna bridge these two points or these two holes here here to here and it looks like I accidentally grabbed a thing over here but actually that's easy enough to fix Q mesh single poly bloop, and bloop. Uh, and again we can just do a quick group by normals I only want to keep the inside really so let's grab that inside again. We'll say delete geometry modified topology, delete hidden, and then we're going to um, find it. I only use this 50 times a day. Uh, there it is. And then we're going to go display properties flip. So it's around here. So there's our there's the start of our bandolier. And then we're going to go through here. And then this one we don't even need to have actual thickness. We can. We can go through here and say again Q mesh poly group ball and pull this out. Uh, but we can also use dynamic thickness just so we can keep this flexible. So in our dynamic subdivision, we're gonna take smooth subdivision down and then thickness up. Now by default, it's gonna be thickness out from the middle. I'm gonna offset that outwards. So really the thickness is just gonna be dialed in out from our geometry here. Um, again, we can do another uh, polish by features, maybe open circle just to kind of really smooth out that geometry here. Cause it's not gonna be following his body or anything. Let's go back here. We'll turn off auto masking topological because we don't need it. And now we can kind of style that in. So quick and easy. Kind of strap across his chest. Uh, now, of course, we need to put bullets along here. That might be a little bit, might be a fun challenge. Um, but that's how we'll dial that in. Uh, same thing for his arms here. So here, are we getting some weird shadows? Yeah, okay. That was bugging me. Uh, same thing for here. So let's go through here and we'll go ahead and I, you know what? I just like to work on duplicates. I don't want to mess around with 
some of the stuff here. So we need a, something to attach his turtle shells to his shoulders here. I hope those aren't real turtle shells. Nah, they wouldn't be real. I think they'd be, I'm gonna say they're plastic molded. He wouldn't kill a turtle. Although yeah, those have turtle bones around his neck. Those could be rat bones, who knows. Uh, but we're basically, we want a strap around here. So we could go through here and we could like mass this out, do the exact same process. But we could also do BTO, topology brush. Let's go ahead and again, delete higher, delete lower on our duplicate. And we're gonna go through here and we're just literally just gonna draw where we want this geometry to go. So here, all the way up. And then around here, we want another big old strap through here. And then just across, one, two, three, bleep, bleep, bleep. And wherever we cross over, we're gonna have geometry. And then if we alt drag over here, that'll clean it up for us. Uh, if we tap off, that'll give the thickness of the mesh based on our brush size. You could do a single sided mesh just by dragging the draw size down to one. I'm gonna do a quick split mass points here. And if we wanna change these thicknesses, we can say Q mesh, polygroup all, hold down shift and pull along those surface normals. Uh, here, I'm going to go through here and I'm gonna say crease an edge here and here and here and here. And if I wanna smooth those out, all I gotta do again, polish by features and just kinda of smooth those out just a little bit here. So. We have our things here. If we want to, we can say Q mesh. Don't want to do poly group all in this case, just a single poly. Up and up a little bit more because I wasn't paying attention. No problem. It's like, oh, my poly groups are messed up. No big deal. Group by normals. Boom. Bada bing. Uh, mirror and weld. And even in this one, uncrease all, run another crease tolerance. We're back where we started. We hit D for dynamic, crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three. And there we got our straps kind of dialed in. We got a little preview of what it would look like. And now I can just move these things uh, into place-ish. And these things do have like a little button on them, but the biggest, the big part is these things here. Now you could get fancy and be like, okay, in the armpit, they start, you know, the leather maybe start wrink starts wrinkling or something like that, but we're going to probably ignore that for now. I'm gonna go through here and I can actually pinch. So instead of having to move the stuff around, you can actually use the pinch brush. Oop, we do still have dynamics turned on for our pinch brush. I'm gonna go turn that off real quick. Uh, underneath our brush settings here, elasticity, simulation duration down to zero. So now we can literally just pinch this geometry shut. Uh, however, remember, all I have to do is hit Shift D and there's our actual geometry. So we're just looking at a preview of what it would look like subdivided, nothing to be scared of. And then it also keeps us flexible for us if we ever wanna go back in and start box modeling on this, we are totally able to. So I don't need to commit to a smooth mesh or a mesh with subdivisions if I don't have to. In fact, rarely do I commit to something with subdivision levels unless it's something like a body where I literally have to sculpt detailed muscles on something. Uh, for this type of stuff, I will keep it um, I will keep it as low as possible. And you know what? We, did, we split that off here. We don't need this one anymore. Delete that out of our scene. And uh, you know what, we need chains that loop these two together as well. So we can use curve. There's a couple different ways we could go about this. This will be a fun one. Um, honestly, what I would end up probably doing is just manually duplicating some of these chains around. These chains seem awful heavy. Is it just me? Okay, they're not too bad. There's another instance where I'm like, why did I have actual subdivisions on here? I'm gonna hit D for dynamic, and I'm gonna do a slight inflate here. And then I'm gonna turn back on topological, and we're gonna say, you can kinda, you. Because again, we're just moving around those super low poly. These are just proxies, high res, the dynamic subdivisions here help it out just a tad. So um, again, I don't really have a chain built, I don't think, but we can make one real quick, just something real simple. Um, Cause we need to put them around his wrist and then also linking these up. The runs around his wrists, hmm, think, think, think. What we could do is we can use curves helper for that. We could use an IMM brush with these spheres uh, or we can just manually duplicate these around. But first we need chain, so I'm gonna do a quick save here. Um, how often would I say I sculpt a day? Oh, uh, a day, zero. Uh, I sculpt twice a month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
once on first Tuesday of the month I do this and then uh, Thursday of the month I do this and then other than that I don't do anything uh, I made the arm muscles there and it's you know you can definitely you know just uh, those reference month uh, uh, you know all sorts of you know grab, grab your anatomy books uh, if you want to see my anatomy books um, I can send that to you Google Drive Oh, you know what? Is this my new one? Hold on just a second. It is. Forms of the head and neck. Okay. I'm going to send y'all a link here. We're going to share. Let's delete that one out of here. We don't need it. It's an old one. Okay. So we're going to share. Get link. Copy link. Done. Here. So what I'm looking at is this here so all through here is a bunch of uh and any books you can check out there may be some other weird stuff in here uh like erotic manga <laughs> it's actually a decent book uh a bunch of jinji ito but also uh, these these things here so basically this whole shelf here a few things up here i think that's where the bulk of those are so there's any number of these are these are all decent and then you can just go into ZBrush and sculpt your heart out. Um, is there a semi-transparent rendering in ZBrush, something like Gummy Candy or other? Yeah, uh, you have to do it per subtool though. So if I wanted to put this, make this a little translucent little guy uh, down here underneath display properties, BPR settings, transparency shading. Yes, BPR render. And then now it'll render transparent. If you wanted to look gummy, you can go in here and put on like a, what's a good one for that gel shader? or something and then when you render this out it'll be a nice gummy whatever but it's not real time it's not like it's always on it's a BPR transparent shading mode cool uh, issues reducing poly counts in my model they're like 90 million how to reduce it down zero mesh and projector details back without seeing it that's probably what I would do uh, way to do that. Oh, I'm losing my place here. Um, contact menu near polygroups above the morph target. Uh, never seen anyone use any good use for it. Um, is that the one where you have? Yeah, this one. You have. Oh gosh, do I have that? So I, that that's some e three D stuff right there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, back in my E3D days, I kind of messed around with that a little bit. It's essentially a way to like store points on two different subtools so that they have, you can triangulate a position. Um, I haven't used it since uh, for 12 years or so. Uh, first contact point, transpose line, second contact point. If you wish to move the arm of the demo soldier to the elbow, select the glove, establish three contact points. These points will create... A link to the arm so when it's moved, the glove will move as well. So instead of using Transpose Master, you could use contact points for that. Um, you can also, oof. Yeah. You, yeah, it's defi there's definitely a use for it. Uh, I just would probably just be more inclined to use Transpose Master. Uh, another thing we need to make sure we're doing is, again, we want to stay honest. So Shift-Z here. We'll turn our perspective back on. And I want to make sure that everything's lining up. Looks like our bandolier is good enough maybe a little bit thinner uh, that's another thing too is you know zero mesh will give you basically what you're looking for but we can also go through here and say delete edge loop complete and again this is a this isn't real thickness here so that's why it's a little bit hard to see let's see oops uh, let's see insert single multiple edge loops hold down alt there we go so we'll simplify that a bit so if we did want to go through here and like you know pinch this down or whatever we can. However, if I did want to shrink this up a little bit, one easy way to do this is go in here to our dynamic here and go ahead and apply that. Um, I'm going to turn that back on, turn thickness back off. So now I can go through here, I'll do a group by normals, and then I can say Q mesh polygroup all, hold down shift, and then I can just move along those surface normals and kind of tighten that up just a tiny bit. So, And you can always get rid of the back ends and stuff too if you want to push that back in, but it's a way to kind of Move those words around. Well, thank you, Stolo, for my narration skills. <laughs> uh, let's see here. 
is there many ways to do that decimation mesh or zero mesh subdivide projecting um you can sub you can project i mean i do this every live stream essentially so if you look back on any of those um yeah you can i, I tend to use history project history underneath your it's underneath your subtool projection here so you can project all and that'll be anything visible in your scene with subtools or project history you just store a point in history control tap that point in history if you need any more information on that um it's the intro to zbrush 2020 is what you're going to be looking for so and every new release i'll do that so uh look for the big uh frankenstein dude and all of these are the new ZBrush 2020 functionality. And if you just do a search for history, you've got uh, history, uh, ZBrush 2020 project history. So video 11 on this playlist here will be project history. And then same thing for my art station page. Uh, might be a little bit easier to look at here. If you go through my profile here, 2018, 2019, 2020. There you go. So right here, those videos what you're looking for that is my bookshelf uh dynamish when you have toes in your model they're moving where they touch it with a low dynamish value basically keep your toes separate uh same thing we did with the hands um, but essentially if you don't want your toes to merge just work with dynamesh on the legs use uh let me see um, it'd be like this. I want hands to be on this thing here, and this is all Dynamesh, right? Let's crank this resolution up just a little bit. There we go. Uh, BI brush insert body parts M hand, like so. It's like, okay, Dynamesh us together. Oh no, this is terrible. Uh, you can raise your resolution, or you can say split mass points. You can keep this Dynameshed. You can keep this. You can Dynamesh this at a higher resolution if you want to while you're working. Uh, and then you can work on these things separately until you're ready to merge them together. And then when you merge them together, if I hold down shift, I'm gonna shoot uh, both these to the top of the bent arrow here. So now I can take the hand uh, resolution, which is dialed in at 688, and then I can merge these down, Dynamesh, that'll merge it at 688, and now these will be fine. Um, so work on the hands or toes or feet separately until you're ready to put them together. And then at the very end, you can put them together and then Z-remesh this. So this is what we were talking about. Where it's like, okay, I'm gonna store this point in history, control tap. I'm gonna go in here, Z remesher, um, depth size down quite a bit. Maybe target polygon count of five is fine. And it's like, okay, I wanna get new details. We can go through here, half, Z remesh half. You're probably gonna start losing resolution on the fingers, but here's our new geometry, right? Um, I can do project history, and that's gonna project these verts to the point we stored in history. Control D to subdivide, project history. Control D to subdivide, project history. Now we have all of our details back as well as subdivision history. So as long as you're not gonna be doing anything crazy with your geometry, this is a pretty decent way to kind of go through and project your history back, work on things separately until you're ready to merge them together, and now you're good to go. So now you can go through here and be like, well, on the wrist here, uh, this little quato arms we put on his hair, we can go through here and start doing our final, a little bit more of a final sculpt. You know, making these work just a little bit better here. And it's the same thing for when you're sculpting muscles. Damien standard, go through here, cut in your forms, clay brush or clay buildup to kind of go through here and you know put in your bony landmarks and all that stuff. So these things will pop out and Damien standard to kind of dig in. And now we've got a little, little flappy bird uh, here. But that's, that's the easy way for me to do it. Um, of course, we don't need hands in his hair, so I'm gonna go back here to the beginning. And we'll turn off perspective, and we'll turn on quick save. Um, has a separate soap tool, they're already finally detailed. How would I go about joining them all into a single piece exactly like I just showed you? So essentially, uh, you can keep the finely detailed stuff separate. Uh, if for your, and that might be an instance where I use project all. Uh, it's under your soap tool menu, project. Project all instead of project history. So you're gonna have finely detailed, finely detailed. Um, go ahead and do, merge those together. Do a Dynamesh on those duplicates. And then Z remesh the envelope basically and then project your details back to visible subtools. Your finely detailed head, your finely detailed body to your Z remeshed uh, version 
of them and then you may have to paint out a seam line you know you may between these you might have like a small seam line or it's like oh shoot it projected that detail back just go and then you're done <laughs> uh, yeah, this, uh, and again if I miss something I apologize I have to I, I miss a lot and I'm also not a very smart person so my and it's also early so cut me some slack um, buy key shot for ZBrush if I'm only using ZBrush US $40 monthly subscription um, I think so yeah I think yeah uh, what's the best and most effective way I think don't quote me on that uh, make sure my 3D prints are watertight and don't fail um, remesh by union boolean and or dynamesh probably I'm trying to get there. I'm almost done with them. Insane pixel. <laughs> we'll get there one day. Uh, how long are the 3D modeling are you measuring back in your 3D days? Uh, I've been doing this for 15 years, 17 years-ish. Since 2005-ish when I graduated Ringling. Uh, I'm a 20 <laughs> You want to keep stuff separated Dynamesh? You can also activate the group button on Dynamesh, but it kind of makes them separate objects. Yes. Very true. And I, I'll use that for some hard surface ideation. So if I'm going to go through here and uh, let's see if I've got a version. So, okay, you know what? Let's do this. I'm going to take this here. I'm going to duplicate it off here. I'm going to say auto groups. And we're going to say you delete hidden. So if I wanted to cut something in here and I wasn't quite sure how it was going to work, I'm going to go through here and I'm just going to like dynamesh this here. And we're going to kind of play around with this. Control W, make it all one poly group. Let's dynamesh it a little bit higher resolution here. Uh, so I can go through here and I can use slice curve. So you can like slice, um, you know, we'll go through here. We'll like slice curve through here. Oops, space bar kind of for brush radius. Uh, we can even, uh, so now that we have this, if I was to dynamesh this together with the groups off, it's just gonna dynamesh those together. However, you can turn groups on and it'll dynamesh these as separate objects. So now I can go through here and I can say you and you groups here. And it's like, okay, I wanna merge these back together. So we're gonna say you control W groups and then those will stick back together and then w alt tap or control tap this one so now i've got this little separate piece here i can go through and be like you know what i want to make this one maybe a little bit thinner oops turn on l sim so we can local scale this bad boy and then pop it up in here and now i've got you know a little separate piece and as long as i have groups turned on it'll dynamesh these are separate pieces or at this point I can just say you know what let's go ahead and split hidden off of here we'll turn off everything hold down shift to turn off all these eyeballs here so now I can just kind of focus in on you know these two pieces to kind of do what I need to do so that's poly groups um cool uncle Jesse <laughs> uh if you're the uncle Jesse I'm thinking of uh, I need to I've got a any cubic photon that I've uh, has been gathering dust for almost two years now so one of those one of these days i, I am going to actually 3d print something damn it uh, i will but uh, i do enjoy uncle jesse's uh channel when i was when i was learning how to how my 3d printer worked i did a deep dive and then i didn't get very far uh, i got sidetracked and well story of my life but let's go ahead and say alt tap here because I think, did we move these things down? No. Where did I put them? Where did I put them? There they are. So these two things here I don't really need anymore. We're just messing around with those. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the transparency material we talked about is just basically BPR settings and your display properties. We talked about that earlier. And so there's our transparency shading going on. Uh, of course, if I was to do it for real, I'd probably throw it in a a renderer so I can get actual refraction and stuff like that. Uh, nano mesh bullets or curve brush? Probably nano mesh. I like to have a little bit more control. So basically, let's go ahead and do that. So we need to make some slugs here. So I'm going to go out of edit mode, hit control N to clear our canvas. We're going to drop into a cylinder here. Go ahead and edit mode. And we're just going to, these are going to be super simple. So we're going to go down here and initialize and we're going to say maybe 12 divides and then four just a very simple cylinder here make poly mesh 3d uh so let's go there you can hold on alt 
on the green one, Y direction, then I'll kind of scale it down that way. Then we need to put a little bullet cap on here. So we're gonna hold down Control Shift, invert that, delete hidden. Let's make this a little brighter so you can see it. And then Z Modeler close, convex hole, and just pull this out. So that'll be our the start of our little slug here. I'm gonna look up a bullet. Not a, not a super, I mean, I do live in Texas, but I'm not a super gun guy. So I'm just gonna have this up available to me so I can kind of eyeball this. You might as well put some detail while we're thinking about it. Uh, so now this is a separate piece from the other piece. If I wanna go that far, I could, and you know what, maybe I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and say split hidden, and we're gonna say close, convex hole, Control W, and then we'll go ahead and say, you know what, let's do a quick Q mesh poly group. I'll pull this down. I always like to do a group by normals just to get my normal uh, back here, and then I can say Q mesh poly group ball. If I want to make it a little thinner, hold down Shift and kind of push this in just a little bit. Of course, this one now needs to be closed here. And again, just Control W. So we've got this piece here, we've got this piece here, and you know what? Let's do it right. I'm going to say Save Image As on my desktop here. It's always better to keep my, I'm terrible at judging uh, using my observational skills. So I'm gonna grab this in here. So I'm gonna say texture, grab it. And we're going to, um, you know what? I'll just leave this alone for now. Let's scale this up a bit, Z. Okay, so something like this. So now uh, on this particular piece, I can go through here, I can move this pivot over here or I can go into solo mode and we can just set that pivot there so now I can scale this back and then for my other piece here it, it looks a little more well no is it I don't know you guys tell me I don't know they look kind of pointy you know what I'm gonna keep them like that so I'm gonna say go into solo mode here and we'll go ahead and say there we go so now we've got this built in, but now we got to put in these, these, these details here. No big deal. We can go through here. We can say insert single edge loop. So I'm just going to put in some control loops right along here. Or if I know about where this needs to go, it, it, it's kind of the distortion of the camera is kind of making it a little bit weird, but we'll go in here and bevel. So that'll be the thickness through here. And then on either side of this, we're going to put in an insert single edge loop just to kind of make it so we have a little fall off. This fall off is a little more drastic than this fall off. So I'm gonna put this one a little closer and now we can just go to your Q mesh poly group ball, hold down shift and just pull this back along those surface normals. Uh, good enough. And then on the bottom, the back here, we can go say inset flat island and we'll just pull this in here and that'll give us that little, uh, you know, the real term is the little p uh, divot. Let's see, bullet um, where the hammer strikes it. There we are. So I'm, I'm just looking at this. So, um, and again, we don't need to get super fancy on this. It's just, it's not real imperative, but while we're just talking about this, we can say bevel as you complete. I always like to do an inset polygroup ball, or in this case, polygroup island is probably a little safer. So we can just do a quick inset and then Q mesh here. So we can hold down shift and just, oops. Just kind of pull that back so it's not going straight in i want to have a little bit of a fall off on that let's go ahead and pull this in a little bit more and then in here we'll do another inset let's keep it on polygroup island here and then right down here in the middle and again do another inset and then q mesh so we can just kind of push this in so at this point we can run a crease with our crease tolerance turned on d for dynamic and like we did earlier crease level of two so we sort of have three and now we've got a little bullet guy. Now on this one, we probably have to put in a control loop here. You can see because these verts are so far apart as it is dynamically subdividing it, the crease is keeping it up there, but it's kind of melting a little bit. That should just go in here to insert single edge loop and just kind of tighten that up just a little bit. And then we put this one back. We'll go ahead and do another crease BG. Again, dynamic, crease level two, smooth level three, just make sure everything's working together-ish. And there is our bullet. Um, so we're gonna take these, we're gonna merge these down. Now at this point, we could absolutely turn this into a B, create insert mesh new, and uh, should have known. So we did a quick save, which is lucky because we'll be able to get our guy back and we'll be able to get that back too. It actually saved. So if it ever blinks out of existence, you're in trouble. Um, in that instance, it actually saved for us. So no big deal. Hit the comma key. 
quick save, go all the way back here to our recovered project. Pray it's not corrupted. We can still get our model back here. So there we go. Back where we started. Um, so again, B, create an insert mesh new, and this is an insert mesh brush. So we can just go through here and just drag these out. If you wanna make them all the same size, just hold down control and it'll snap to that. So that's just, that's a perfectly fine way to go do this. However, you can also go in here with that brush created, just through that brush right at the end here. You can go in here to brush, create, insert nano mesh brush. What this is gonna allow us to do is allow us to, if we wanted to make changes to the bullets after we apply them, uh, we can certainly do that. The first thing we need to do though is make sure that this bandolier, is that the correct name? Is that the term I wanna use? Uh, follows the body here. And in this case, let's go down here to geometry. I'm gonna drop this all the way down to subject level one. And we'll turn off X symmetry because this one's gonna to come out a little bit more over this volume. Yeah, okay, so there we go. Move this around. So now I wanna put bullets basically on every single one of these squares here. So what I'm gonna do is go in here to sub tool and we're gonna duplicate this off. Go into solo mode. I just want the dark blue. So we're gonna say delete hidden on this duplicate. And then all along the front here. Um, I don't necessarily, I'm gonna hold down alt. Looks like it goes um, here. And then all the way down to this one here. So we're gonna say delete hidden, control W. And this will be our nano mesh squares. Now we can even split these squares up if we want to. Uh, I guess one easiest easiest way to do that would be in here underneath. <laughs> Geometry, modify topology, there is an unweld all, and then I'll unweld these. However, I do wanna put a little bit of space in between them. So I'm gonna go through here really quickly and just do a quick bevel as a complete. I'm gonna dial in that width and then just go through here and tap. That'll keep that width for me. Now you can do this on every single plane. What I'm looking for is just a way to move these planes around later if I need to and then say delete hidden. So now we've got our brush here. It's got our Z modeler brush we made with our insert nano mesh polygroup all. And now when I drag this out, it'll drag a bullet on every single one of these. Uh, and they are facing down. So I can go through here and say, okay, there's our nano mesh here with our nano mesh properties. I can go through here and I can say, okay, I don't need to show placement. I already know what the placement's gonna look like. And now I can go through here and I can adjust these. So we can even adjust a couple different ways we can do this. The planes are dictating where these things end up. However, I can also go through here and do an offset here. So this is gonna inset them more or less onto the strap. And you know what, I guess maybe out is a little better. And then the Y offset is gonna be up or down and it actually looks like it does overlap the top a bit. And again, I'm looking at this here. It kind of looks like they poke out, although these ones don't. Be consistent with your super fast Saturday morning cartoon drawings. <laughs> I mean, honestly, what I should be looking up is, when in doubt, grab some reference. Uh, okay, that was the right word. Okay, they're all pointing down and they seem to be towards the top. Oh, that's a cool one. Um, Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Um, what was the one I had? I like that one, this one. I think it's about right. So yeah, towards the top, but not overlapping. So we'll go ahead and say this Y offset here. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze something about here. You can even go through here and change all the size on the fly if you need to. Um, but I think they're about okay ish we don't need to do any y or x rotation or variances or anything like that now if we ever decide you know what i do need to make some adjustments to this model this is where the power of this comes through so instead of using an imm brush where i'd have to go through and fix every single one of these i can go in here and say edit mesh and then uh, i don't need to have split screen on go into solo mode here and then if i again if i need to do shift d and if i need to make them all longer or if i need to go through here and add anything like you know insert single ledger loop here i decided that i needed um, a bevel here oh here's an interesting thing so what we can do is i can actually use these to actually make my loops let's do that let's go out of a mesh so we'll use that same functionality of edit mesh but what we're going to do is we're going to take these bullets 
I'm going to see on these bullets here, it's their wraps. You know, you stick them through a little leather loop. So let's go ahead and make those leather loops utilizing the bullets that we already have available to us. So how we're going to do that is we're going to take these nano meshes which already exist, duplicate them off. However, I'm going to go into our edit mesh here, go into solo mode, and then the leather loops are going to go, I'm going to borrow this geometry, so we're going to do again shift D, we're going to go poly group, poly loop here. We're going to take both of these, we're going to say delete hidden, insert single edge loop, let's get rid of that one. And now, I can go through here and I can say Q mesh polygroup all, pull out, and you know what? Let's. Hmm. I always like to do a quick. I'm gonna do a slide as with complete. We're gonna slide these down just a little bit. I hate things that come straight out at me. So again, we're gonna do a crease PG. Turn on dynamic if you want to crease level two. Smooth so of three just to kind of again just to eyeball how it's gonna turn out. I think that'll be fine. So we'll do shift D to turn that off. So now essentially what we've done as we've made those loops and they'll line up exactly where our original bullets are. And they're still nano mesh, you know, so we go into solo mode here and I turn on show placement. These things are dictating where these go. In fact, if I go through here and start moving these around, you'll see they start moving around as well. They're just instances on a piece of geometry. So now I can have, I can turn off show, oops, show placement here. So now I can have my leather straps here and my bullets at the same time. Um, these bullets do seem a little bit longer here. So I am going to go through here and change the length of them just maybe a little bit here so you can tap on a number of these sliders in here and then on the top you have a little bit of a finer adjustment so i'm going to stretch those out just a tiny bit here okay i'll leave the leather straps alone and then those will be good enough for government work for now and in fact just to make this a little bit easier if i go in here to show placement i can get rid of this one so Control shift a invert delete hidden and again, it's just that plane that's dictating where those go. Same thing on this one. Show placement, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And then again, turn show placement off. So we don't need it. Show placement off. Okay, and then I'm down here, uh, I can go back to subtool, all high, and we're back kind of where we started from. Okay, let me get caught up here. Uh, I have the original photon like old 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 <laughs> um like yeah like think first first gen i mean i've had it it's literally been gathering dust for years so um yeah so posing this will be through transpose master probably uh, how do you take the shoulder piece you just made and zero mesh while keeping sharp angles? That is where you control. So like for, this is a good example. So if I wanted to zero mesh this for some reason, um, you know, let's say, let's duplicate this off here. Ugh. Um, duplicate and apply and delete lower. We'll just do one side delete hidden. So I have a bunch of geometry here. Uh, I can construct this back, but it's probably going to be a pain. But if I wanted to zero mesh this, so you have these are have smaller and these have wider squares. We can go through your zero mesh. You're going to want to have keep groups on, smooth groups down to zero because the groups are already pretty smooth. Now when I hit zero mesh, it's going to look at the groups and we have half turned on depth size down to zero. Those will give me nice even clods. So now zero mesh is looking at the groups. You may have to help it out a little bit, um, but it should do a pretty decent job if you ever need to though if it's ever like you did they did three on the back and four on the front well just remember you can just take this one delete hidden and then extrude pull your ball so essentially you're how you keep sharp edges is you dictate where those edges exactly need to be using polygroups is how you do with that and if it, it's not going to work miracles you know if it's a very complex piece it's probably not going to have a great it's not going to do great um Cool. Yeah, well, always, you know, now's the best time to learn low poly in ZBrush. You see how easy it is, you know? Uh, there's no, no reason to hop into Maya to make a cylinder. Uh, make nano mesh, an actual mesh. I want to save ZBrush just crashes without saving. Um, I make the nano mesh an actual mesh. So it show, fingers crossed, uh, we're able to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and save this out because I think. Yeah, we're already past time. Recording. Uh, what are we doing? It's called, nope, turtle power. 
Nope, we're streaming, not recording. Duh. Elemental PQRST. There we go. Ebot. Block out 17. Uh, so if I wanted to convert these, a couple different ways you can do that. Do that. So we're going to go into, I mean, maybe this is an option for you. Uh, so one way to do this is to convert it down here underneath nano mesh inventory one to mesh. And then I'll go ahead and make it this geometry. We don't need those planes anymore. So we can say delete hidden and we're good to go. Uh, also, another option you can try if that is causing crashy stuff is you can take this here and uh, if we hit VPR render, you know, hello, we have a nano mesh here. You can also do geometry convert VPR to geo and that will convert your nano mesh to geometry as well. And then say delete hidden. And then it should be able to save. I didn't crash, so. <laughs> I am an AI machine learning bot. I, you know, I mean, I do, before I before I get really old, I'm hoping I'm able to kind of upload my brain somewhere. That might be, although, I don't know, I've seen uh, Black Mirror, and uh, I don't know, that can get a little bit bad, too. Hmm, maybe I, maybe I won't upload my brain. Cool. Cool, thanks, everybody. Uh, should we model the band that holds the bullet itself on the bandolier of the bullet nano mesh? Ah, we fixed it. We got it. And, and, and again, if I did want to do that, I can go back in here to edit mesh and just add that to the actual bullet there. But this way, the bandolier straps, the little leather pieces can be a different material, there's different objects as opposed to, well, now I've got a strap combined with a bullet and the same subtool, and it gets a little bit messy. Um... Cool, excellent. Thank you, Sebastian, for the kind words. Uh, right. Animation the program, they have a timeline. Uh, yeah, you can kind of animate in ZBrush. What I would love is to have, um, yeah, to test out functionality for hard surface stuff, the ability to set a pivot and a pivot hierarchy, basically, and rotate stuff around around the pivot, because that would be that would be really, really nice. One day, maybe. Oh, I know, I know so many so many people know ZBrush better than I do. I know I know my little corner of ZBrush. Cool. Thanks, everybody. We got we got made a little headway. Hopefully, those techniques help out. We made some stuff. We got a few more things we need to make, and then we'll go into hair and fur and poly painting and posing and all that stuff. Maybe we'll do that. So Thursday on my live stream, Twitch.tv, PavMic, my YouTube channel, and again just for resources for ZBrush specifically, but also some other stuff too. You know, you'll find a ton of stuff in here. Most of my station page is just tutorial things. So I'll link you all of that just in case you need to catch up on anything here. And then same thing for my YouTube channel. Probably actually the playlist sections where you're going to want to go. Um, that's where all the stuff is. Cool. Uh, same, same bat time, different bat place. So my channel, but uh, 6 a.m. Central, 4 a.m. <laughs> and, and also I, uh, I archive these too. So if you go down here, to my live stream full episodes, you'll see they'll be packed up here. Bada bing. And you can see all of our all of our last ones. Cool. Thanks everybody. I will catch you on the flip side. <laughs>